It's kind of cool. It's great, yeah. And I'm a little, a little nervous because this weekend is supposed to be a hundred and a hundred and two. I Ooh. know. That's awful. So girl. I'm gonna probably get dressed in like ice clothes. I'm gonna put yeah. ice pads in my bra. Oh yeah. It'll be boiling by yeah. midday. Just remove but... all the food from your freezer and just go stand right. in it for a there while. There you go. Oh. Or remove all the food from your freezer, pack it on your body, yeah. and go to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once... Because my air conditioning died at my work. I was there yesterday, but I. Are we sure it's dead? No. Okay. No, but Debbie's gonna look at it. When, but she doesn't Good. get in until Saturday, and Saturday's the day it's 102 degrees. Girl. Or 100 or whatever. I know. I Blech. can't even. I knew it was gonna be super hot, so we like 90 or so, hotter than that on Friday. And I told you, Gavin's taking the day off, and we're gonna take 98. A, 98, okay, a little beach trip. Yeah. And he's like, it's gonna be so hot. And I'm like, no, it won't. It's, but it'll be nice at the beach. It'll, I said it'll be really nice at the beach. The Oregon coast is different than LA, babe. Like, yeah. when it's hot, in Portland, it's much better. It's, yeah, it's usually at least 20 degrees cooler, yeah. sometimes more. So that'll be wonderful. So, yeah. And it's those really kind of freak days mm-hmm. that you get to the beach and it's actually hot at the beach. That yeah. rarely happens. Yeah. It right? does happen. Yeah. But it's rare. Well, he wants to go... You've probably heard of this, because in Oregon they do that thing where there's, like, blown glass balls that they hide yeah. on the beaches. So we've done a similar thing in uh, Tualatin Parks. We ran around Tualatin oh, Parks right, the glass look, hearts. looking for glass hearts. And we found a, ro- a lot of other random things. That, and some things that were cool that were from Tualatin Parks that were painted rocks with like trees on it. And cute things like that that were supposed to be like, you didn't find a glass heart, but you know, you found this You cute found thing. this cool thing. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go look for the glass balls, but he's never been to the Oregon coast. Oh. Ever. He's never once so ever. So he's been here for how long? Um, he has been... Uh, back in Oregon since the summer, two years. So two years, but he went to school here too, didn't he? Yeah, never went to the coast. And never went to the coast, that's wild. Crazy, I know. And he was trying to tell me, oh, I never really spent much time on the east side, because he went to PSU and stayed downtown. Uh, But he was like, well, I guess that's not true. I came here quite often. But inner east side, never this far out. close in. Yeah, so he's explored a lot more since he's moved back, obviously. Well, and now that he works, you know, quite a ways away, he gets... All kinds of adventures All kinds and of it, yeah. traffic and... Yeah, well, yeah. and he drove up here. I don't think he drove up here when he moved here. The, I mean, uh, for school. When he moved here this last time, he brought everything with him. So he drove the whole length of Oregon, which I don't think he had done before either. Right. Mm-hmm. What's funny to me is the whole <coughs> length of Oregon <clears throat> yeah. is like driving for like a quarter of the way across Texas. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I think of it reverse too. I think of places like... Scotland, you know, where it takes like eight hours, six hours, eight hours to drive from like top to bottom or something. Yeah. And I'm like, that's your whole country. So Scotland's about the same size as Oregon? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's weird though, right? It is weird. To think about it. Well, it's that. also weird the East Coast <clears throat> is weird where you can drive through six states in a day yep. because they're all teeny tiny. Yep. And Europe too, driving through distinct different yeah. countries. Like, yeah, that shit's weird to me because we live in the United States and we don't live in a small state, you know? Um, no, it's not one of the smaller ones. I no. mean, it's, we're kind of average sized for yeah. the West Coast. Yeah, I would say that. Because um, yeah. with, like, Oregon, Washington, uh, like, Wyoming, Idaho, you know, Colorado, they're all kind of about the same yeah, size. Yeah, yeah. Arizona. <clears throat> yeah, I would agree. Oh, my God. I've seen so much online lately about people not realizing that New Mexico is a state, not part of Mexico. Wait, like Americans? Yeah, stupid Americans. Stop. Uh, you know, mostly probably we're Trumplicans, but yeah, we're, we're like, we don't want to talk about Mexico. Why are we talking about Mexico? It's like, it's <gasps> New Mexico. <clears throat> it's yeah. a state. Yeah, and if you... In the states. Right, and let's talk about it. Mexico, baby, used to um, expand, like, to the top of California, like, straight yeah. across. All of that was Mexico. Yeah, it was all Mexico. I know. Oh, that's something we should talk about, too. Did you read anything about the debates? <laughs> I saw little bits about the. I saw little clips. Same. Now, what Ugh. I was hoping was, so was that uh, Biden would have at least 
strong and accurate talking points. Yeah. And he had the, the talking points, but wasn't strong in delivering them. He At was very all. weak. Mm-hmm. He seemed confused. Very bumbly. And, I mean, he gave the right answers. I'm going to say that. But in a way that doesn't make you confident about no. him at all. Whereas Trump, everything he said was a lie. Yeah, and that's what I will say. Is Trump was confident and more concise, which is crazy. At the beginning, but by the end, right. he was pretty out of it, but, pretty drifting. Well, and I'm not obviously pro-Trump at all, but I was embarrassed that Biden was such a bumbling old fucking man that he's up there all... And yeah. he couldn't stay on topic, one. And he couldn't remember... What he was talking about. And, like, I get it. He's 80-something. That's a problem, bitch. He's going to run our nation. He's 80-something. Right. Well, and I was listening to this woman <clears throat> whose name I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. She, love her. I love her. She works in the White House. Okay. And I think she's one of the, like, a press secretary or something. Yeah. And just this uh, queer woman of color okay. who works there. And, uh, <clears throat> but she kept talking about when you're voting for... Joe Biden for president. Mm -hmm. You're voting for an entire group of people. It's his entire, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it's called. You know, it's like, it's not just him. You have his whole, you know, group, his whole, whatever. I can't think of the word this morning for whatever reason, because I'm old. Uh, But it's like, I get that, yes. I get that you're trying to sell that it's okay that you have a hundred year old man who can't remember anything in power. Because, you know, he's surrounded by all these other people who do know what's going on. Yeah. But I don't want the guy with his finger on the button to be like, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and I'm not saying Joe Biden is senile, but he is old and he's having some troubles. We have lived with a woman in her 80s for the past how, since she's been in her 70s, bitch. Like, I, no matter if he's at the top of his game or not. He should not be president. Neither should Trump. Well, and Trump. he's clearly not at the top of his Right, game. right. And neither should Trump. That isn't even a question. I'm talking about the more, like, liberal. But, girl, here's here's the issue. Is, yes, Biden has all these people who surround him, who are progressive, who are, you know, keeping him up to date and saying the right things. But this younger... Not this younger, because I'm like, fuck it up, children. Burn it down. I don't care. Um, everyone wants... To yell, mostly older generations, mostly people who want to maintain status quo about, well, the lesser of two evils. Yes, they're both old, but he's not gen- he's not crazy. He's not genocidal. That's not how the youth see him. Do you know what I mean? The youth right. see him as a war criminal. Yes. They see him as somebody who has uh, pushed genocide. He's Who's allocated funded. millions of dollars to the war in Israel. And he has funded the genocide of the Palestinian people. And so it's hard for people. And the Muslim Americans aren't going to vote for Joe Biden no matter what he says, no matter how great he looks, not a single one of them. There's been, and that was a huge conversation after he talked about that. And so, so we can, and and the debates are really interesting. It just shows us the reality of these people's mentality and like their, how their brains are functioning. But what's interesting to me is, uh, what's, what's going to happen? I don't think Joe Biden's going to win, to be honest, not because like, I don't think you're going to vote or I'm going to vote, but like, I don't think there's enough people that vote for him consistently and like is he the lesser of two two evils absolutely um that sucks he's still evil yeah i was watching um this news program and i'm sorry i can't remember the news uh reporter's name she's i watch her all the time and i'm just terrible with names anyway yeah yeah yeah. but she was talking about how during the debates Mm -hmm. and she works i believe for msnbc okay and she was saying how during the debates that her phone was lighting up the entire time with a lot of people you know, on the Democratic side going, what the fuck are we going to do? Mm-hmm. This is not the win that we had hoped for. Because <clears throat> no. we hoped that Trump would be his normal Trump asshole self and get yeah. up there and lie. But CNN also decided, on a little side note, not to fact check this year. Mm. Because they've had it before, where as they're saying things, you'll see a little scroll at the bottom where it's fact checked. Yeah. And, it's, and they decided not to do that. Uh, for whatever reason, which obviously not good for that. So anyway, but she was saying that her phone was lighting up with all these people saying, we need to have a different plan. Mm -hmm. We need to have a candidate that is strong. We need to not just go because he's president, he should be it again. We need to do something. And this was apparently, she said through the whole time 
of the debates and yeah. after and for the next two days that all these people are like, what are we going to do? Yep. Because this ain't going to fly. No. And we're going to end up with that other guy in power and he wants to deconstruct everything. everything. He wants to strip away everyone's rights. Yeah. And, you know, that may sound like, oh, you're just being dramatic. Okay. In Project 2025, read it online. You can. It's terrible. It talks about... Uh, stripping away most of the government protections. Mm -hmm. It talks about getting rid of a lot of government jobs. It talks about uh, taking away all reproductive rights Mm -hmm. and banning them. Like, not just abortion, but also uh, birth control. Crazy. And any access to birth control. Crazy. And it's like, because, you know, they want it so that the religious folks are running everything. I have a couple things to say before I forget. Um, it's about this, access to birth control. You can buy Plan B on Amazon. You can buy it in bulk on Amazon. Everyone buy it. I don't so care stock who. up. So everyone, men, women, non-binary people, whether you can get pregnant or bu- not, buy it so you can give it to your friends who can get pregnant. It's not super great for your body, obviously, but if you don't know and you don't have access to birth control, you can take Plan B. Buy it in bulk on Amazon. Also, if you are a heavier person, if you are thicker or fatter or more muscular or whatever, you need to take a higher dosage or it will not work. Just so you oh. know. Doctors don't tell you that. But I have friends. I have very thick friends. I have fat friends who are uh, who are very promiscuous and didn't know and got pregnant because. Hang on, fat people can't be promiscuous. You know, because nobody wants to sleep. With I them. like to live my life in this weird gray area <laughs> where people of all shapes and sizes and genders and colors can like do whatever they want. Isn't that weird? Um, weird, 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 weird. I don't think that's right. I know, me either. Um, but yeah, it's just like something that doctors don't talk about because it's like, okay. oh, you yeah, gotta take a pill and you'll be fine. Yeah, if you weigh like 185 pounds. But if you or weigh... Or less. Right, right. But if you weigh more than that, there's a chance that it won't work. So just double your dose, right? But that's what I have to say about that. Project 2025 is scary. But yeah. Yeah. I just Also, needed... during the debates, yeah. one of the specific things that Trump said... Which I'm all, could we have some definition? Could we, like, you know, talk about this topic? He said that, you know, Biden has let in all the, the criminals, <laughs> the, all the crazies, yeah. the druggies, the whatever. And now all of these immigrants are taking black jobs. What's a black job? I don't know, girl. Uh, I don't know. What is that? And I saw a woman yesterday going, please tell me. It was a black woman saying, mm-hmm. what's a black job? I have no idea. I have I, no idea. I mean, I suppose if there's a role written in a in a script that says we need a black actress for this, uh-huh. that's I guess a black job. Well, if, and you know what though? If it's written by a white person, it's like that black actor actress is like a pimp or a gang member or right. a prostitute or a crack whore. You know, it's all or, the stereotypes. Or there's somebody who was down and out until a white person came in uh-huh. as their savior. Hey, fancy! Here's a billion dollars. Yeah, um, I will say too that these. I'd be okay with a white savior thinking me a billion dollars. Girl, I would be all, oh my god, thank you so much. White people are the greatest. And then I would ruin his life. I don't know. Um, the other thing they did about the debates, which I thought was interesting, was that there were there was no audience. And when the one when one was answering, the other person's mic was muted. So they intentionally did that. Oh, I like that. I didn't know that. There was a couple times where it crossed over, like when they were both were going back and forth about golfing. They bitch. Like, oh, Trump being like, oh, well, I'm you know, I'm so good at golf or whatever. And then he said, I challenged him and he wouldn't even do it. And I can hit the bar real, real, real far and he can't even hit it 50 yards or something weird. Um, and then by Biden- weird flex in a debate. But Biden fed into it and was like, Ugh, my, I've had my handicap at six and whatever. And they went back and forth. And so, so it was a pissing match. Yes. During girl. the middle of a political debate about golf. Yes. And so, yes. And... I know. And so what you were saying earlier about the the Democrats being like, uh, WTF, like, we're gonna, we have to figure something out. There's been, like, real talk now, a move to, like, there's people who want to move Joe Biden out and have someone else be the candidate. Because, again, he's grandpa, bitch. Like, I'm not saying old people don't deserve to, like, live. I'm saying old people don't deserve to run the fucking country. So, this is just a silly side note. When I was, uh, young, like... Teenage oh, and young warthog. When I was a young warthog, I was mm-hmm. gonna say that, but when I was a young warthog, when I was in, I want to say early high school, there was a movie came out called Logan's Run, right? And the whole idea was you lived in this kind of 
you know, utopian kind of society where you lived, but it was all underground, okay. and so everything was controlled, okay. and it was all controlled by the government. Love. Oh my but gosh. it was like you were, you had food, you had housing, you had everything you needed. Okay, what's modern? Mm. Well, at 30, when you turned 30, the little uh, light that was implanted into your body Gross. would I start flashing. That. I hate that. So, uh, you then had to go to this thing where it was like uh, in an arena, mm -hmm. and your body would be lifted up and you'd be elevated to the whatever the uh -huh. like next level is, oh, right? okay. Well, they were really just killing them all. They would kill them at 30. Oh. Because so overpopulation, want to keep it controlled, oh. and so the whole and the reason it's called Logan's Run is because there were Logan was the guy who stopped people from running because you know some people figured it out yeah and they're like we gotta get the fuck up out of here or they would disable their lights or they yeah. would do whatever uh, that'd be me but it's like well that's one way to make sure nobody gets old and see I'll just kill them all at thirty girl well but here's the thing too I know this is so crazy. Um, uh, the movie Midsummer, which mm -hmm. you haven't seen, but it's, I have not. It is about you know like a Norwegian cult, but not like a Charles Manson cult. They're kind of just like free loving nature love, but they go through different periods where like you're young, you're a child until you're this age, and then you're an adult, and then another phase, and then at some uh, at some point when you're like elderly, you're a mentor. But then when you hit a certain age, seventy five, you walk off the cliff. You know, and it's their way of not being a burden, right? It's their way of like not. But does it have to walk off a cliff? I know, and that is the worst part. I would be okay at like, you know, I've made it to eighty. Nothing's gonna get better from here. No, take me now, Jesus. You but know, couldn't that you would just be take fine. some sleepy nine nine pills? I oh, don't want to walk off a cliff. I don't want to walk off a cliff. I don't either. think I could. I think you'd have to probably push me off. You'd probably have to drug me. And One. roll me off the cliff. Two. Like, yeah. All right, let's just start rolling her, and hopefully we'll get some momentum. You know what, momentum. though? I don't want to walk off a cliff either, but I think I might have an easier time walking off a cliff if it wasn't water. Yeah. If I just walked off a cliff onto pavement, I'd be all, or ground, I'd be all... Pavement. Pavement. Ah. I know. Fine. It sounds fine. I'll die, at least. I'll die. Hopefully I'll, make... I'll die on the way down. I know. Just heart attack. <laughs> okay. What would be worse is if he didn't die. And what if you didn't die after and you landed? Broken up because you've heard about those women, women those women, like oh, those, those women. women, yeah, um, like a flight attendant had fallen from a plane and landed and survived. How? How do you do that, Jesus, girl? I don't God. know, guardian but I don't angel, want to survive. girl. No, I would be like, kill me now. I can never do anything again. I'm uh, scared. I and even if you could, yeah. Once you and I, because I would assume she broke a lot of her body. I'm probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you've broken major amounts of bones, even if they mend them, you will always have problems with yeah. them. Yeah. So, no thanks. No, I'll just die. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. So, I, what, my thought oh, okay. about this whole, you know, who, who to have for president. Yeah. Because I can't think of a single um, person who could be like, Oh, everybody's gonna love this person. We'll put them in. Every of the young people, old people, everyone will vote for them. Yeah, because like the first person, first two people that came to mind were one Kamala Harris. Because mm -hmm. I was thinking Joe could just step down and be mm -hmm. like, you know, clearly. I mean, I watched my own debate and yeah. I didn't do so hot. I am going to step down and let Kamala be president. And then we would at least achieve that we had our first female president and a black woman president and whatever. So awesome. Oh. But if she's the candidate on the ballot in the fall, how many people are going to be like, we, we don't want a woman. We can't We're have not going to vote for president. a woman. We're not going to vote for a black person. A black woman. Yeah. Right. Because she's too radical. And then the only other person I thought of right off the top of my head, and I know there's lots and lots of people out there, was Pete Buttigieg. Hmm. And people, but he's queer, he's so we gay. can't vote for him. But he's gay. But he's more American than most people I know. Yeah, you know, he's like served in the military. Yeah, he's like. But still, there's going to be the people. There's going to be the all gay. those religious. It's like, well, we he's can't vote for him. He's, he's gay. I know. Well, and it's so funny because I was all Jill Stein. <laughs> Can Jill Stein win? But she's also, um, I don't know, a woman. Yeah. So, girl, it's a nightmare. It's a literal fucking nightmare. But this is what America's become. I mean, granted, I don't. We talk about this all the time. I don't ever think America was like great. But I think it's a fucking shithole now. Yeah. It's a little well, it's like I know that I sent you a video not very long ago. And this woman talking about how everybody should just burn it down. Mm -hmm. Like you always like to say. Yeah. And she's like, everything's a mess. And people keep saying, 
it all needs to be burned down. And she's all, yep, burn it all down, burn everything. And she said the America as a uh, superpower has lasted far too long. Mm-hmm. It's not meant, nothing's meant to last that long. Mm-hmm. Nothing is meant to get that powerful unchecked. So it needs to be mm-hmm. dismantled. It needs to be taken back down to something. It's like, because now it's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, uh, and I saw this thing the other day and I don't know the accuracy of it because I didn't bother to like look it up and I don't know that you're ever going to get the truth if you do. Okay. But I heard this person talking about how much money the government is spending to get rid of TikTok. Mm, yeah. The amount of money they're spending is ridiculous. Is outrageous. Uh-huh. Think of the good things they could do. Think of what they could do for the houseless population. Think about what they could do for the uh, people who are food insecure. Think of what uh. they could do for like jobs that need to be created or whatever. It's like all these billions of dollars to end an app on your fucking phone. Well, and the biggest... I know. It's so fucking stupid. I, I posted a list not that long ago that was like all the things the American government could have done with the money that they've used to try and ban TikTok. And it is, you know, like Medicare for all, free education, free housing, like all of these stupid fucking things, things that are amazing that could have really helped the United States, but you're banning TikTok. And people want to be like, ugh, Chinese spyware. Okay, but do you understand that TikTok isn't the only app that China owns? You know? It's not the only app. They They also own Snapchat. Which, I don't know if you understand, is also um, a picture app where people are taking tons of fucking pictures. Well, because, of course, everybody's posting all of their their whereabouts and their everything yeah. they do all day. Like, the things they eat, the places they go, the people yeah. they see. So, whereas Tic Tac, Tic Tacs, as a rule, yeah. is people putting out videos of either, yeah. like, something funny or something, whatever, a song or a thing. It's not usually, uh, I went... You know, to Red Robin for lunch, and here's no. what I had, and here's a picture of my food. Yeah, honestly. Well, and also they own WhatsApp, which is just uh, uh, like an instant messaging app. Yes. Um, yeah. But that also tracks you. Like, why are we focusing on TikTok? Because it's video based? Like, it just is so weird to me. It's yeah. so popular and it's not American owned. Like, I don't know what it is. But again, the whole, oh, Chinese sp- spyware. And, and. Bitch, they let them look at Snapchat or WhatsApp, which I also have, and then guess what? They'll know where the fuck I am, huh? Like, well, and that's the other thing is, you know, when when the stupid, stupid people during uh, the beginning of the coronavirus, when the vaccines were just being made, yeah, uh, it was like, well, they're they're putting a tracker in you. There, it's like, okay. first of all, stupid, yeah, but second of all, you have a tracker in your hand, yeah, bitch, at all times, because uh-huh. most of y'all don't even put them down, yep. And if you do, it's in your pocket. Yep. You know, or whatever. Or your bra. Or your bra. (laughs) And so, you're being tracked at all times anyway. All the time! Which is why your phone is like, if you talk about whatever, it's like, suddenly that ad appears. Also, you search for anything on the internet on any of your devices. Yeah. And the next time you open up your phone. You say it out loud, bitch. (laughs) Pretty much. much. Yeah. Um, Pretty much. And so, you think that you're not being tracked? Also... And by the way, who do you think makes your phones? Also, who does... Right, exactly. <laughs> who... What do you think they're looking for? Do you think they're looking for Joe Blow going to work and then going to smoke weed and then hooking up with a girl and then going to a bar? They don't give a fuck. You're boring. Do you think they're looking at us? I don't leave my house but twice a week. Um, where do you... What do you think I'm doing, you know? And so people are like, oh, they're going to track me. Doing what, Betty? Like, you know, they're what? going to look at my phone and go... She's been to Starbucks three times this week. She's we better a real look at her. fucking problem. Yeah, I just... <laughs> She's a whole, fucking snooze is like, what she is. It's a, to me, it's the same energy of like, oh, they're tracking me. They're tracking me. The same energy of stupid, dumpy-ass fucking corn-fed white people being like, are these Mexicans, all these foreigners are coming here and stealing my jobs. Yeah, that neuroscientist is really stealing your job, right. Joe Blow. Like, right. go fucking fuck your sister and go farm. Go till some land or whatever you're good at. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, that is... It's just so annoying to me. That well, people... and it's also stupid. Yeah. It is stupid. I'm it's... sorry. And even if we were just talking about, like, migrant workers... Yeah. Are they stealing your job? No. Were you working a farm? No. No. Were you going to do any kind of manual labor? No. No. So, even if we were only talking about migrant workers. Yeah. None of y'all want to do that job. No. No. You know, so, fuck off. Girl. 
And then we're talking about all the people who immigrate here who are not white, but have advanced degrees oh. and who yes. are, let's face it, smarter than any of us will ever be. Yeah. They're not taking your job at the factory. Ma'am. Or they're well, not taking your job at the gas station or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. The grocery store. Yeah. It's like, they don't want your job. No. No. Well, and they it, want actually to be able to do the same thing they were doing in their country, but our country would be like, oh, you may have been a doctor in yeah. Iran, but now that you're here, oh. Yeah. Sorry. We don't think you should be you're a doctor. You're a janitor. Um, right. Well, and that's, that's, yeah, yeah. It is interesting to me. They're coming here stealing our jobs. I'm like, most people who immigrate here from, uh, like, any part of Asia, most of the Middle East, are more educated because they push secondary education much harder than America and in a different way where people are actually learning something and doing something. It doesn't become a stalemate where you get education and then you're all, oop, there's nothing available. Right. There's, you know, or in the whole idea, nobody wants to work anymore. Have you seen the articles about people who've applied to like hundreds of jobs and they have like up to master's degrees and experience and they don't get any callbacks. Like finding a job, especially a job where you, where you have to have advanced degrees is near impossible. Yeah. So you know, since you brought that up, yeah, there was one of the things I want to talk about. I heard a phrase and I know we talked about quiet quitting before mm-hmm. and just a quick reminder. If you don't know what that is, it's where if your job is from nine to five, mm-hmm. That at 5.01, you're, you're done. All done. And when they're like, well, you could just work, could you just work a little extra. Mm, you know, no. it's like, we're only going to pay you till 5. Yeah. But, you know, for the company or we're a family here or any of the bullshit that they yeah. say to try and guilt you into working off the clock. The other phrase that I heard this week was, act your own wage. Yes, And I girl. hadn't heard that before. Yeah. And I love that. But that is, okay, I'm paying you to be an assistant. Yep. But now I'm expecting you to keep picking up more and more and more responsibilities, but I'm not going to pay you more. And then I'm expecting you to be available 24 seven, but I'm not going to pay you more. And I'm certainly not going to promote you. And if I do promote you, it's going to be in title only. Yeah. yeah. And so I've seen lots of videos in the last couple of weeks of people saying, you know, uh, I had a thing at work the other day where someone's like, congratulations, you're being promoted. But there is no promotion other Ooh. than you're going to get to do more. You have more mm. responsibilities. No, thank you. For no more money. No, thank you. And, you know, now we want you to do the job of like two people because we nope. we got rid of Deborah Sue over yeah. here. But you're going to pick up her work. But yep. you're going to have the same eight hours in which to complete it and get no more money. Yeah. I and know. People are now. And, you know, this whole generation of people who don't want to work. No, they don't want to work free. Mm-hmm. They don't want to give away their time. They don't want to clock out at 10 and then be expected to work another hour of cleanup or whatever it is. Mm-mm. They don't. The other thing is, and I've heard this so many times is, and if people tell you to, you have to do this, it's not legal to tell you your shift starts at nine. Mm-hmm. You need to be here at eight forty five to make sure you're prepped and ready to go. Now, if my shift starts at nine, I will probably be there at eight forty five to make sure I'm not late anyway. Yep. But I'm not working off the clock. Mm-mm. You know, it's like, and I don't work on the clock anyway. That's not really the point. But if I did, yeah, I'm not working 15 minutes no. free, like setting up. I will absolutely, if I was working, I would clock in and then do setup yeah. because that's not my responsibility yeah. to do yeah. on my own time. Well, yeah. And that's what people expect. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, we'll be here at, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Eat shit. There's a part of me that agrees with, like, if you're expected to yeah. be, let's say, at a show. Yeah. And the show starts at nine. Yeah. You can't really show up no, at nine. But that's different. But, than right. your job. It is different. Yeah. You know, but if it's like, if you show up, if you show up at work at the moment that your shift is supposed to start, you're probably not really starting on time. Yeah. But if you show up a few minutes early, put your coat down. Yep. Lock up your purse in your locker, whatever you do. But at nine o'clock, you are ready yeah. to clock in and do your job. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, girl. Well, and here's but the if th- they're expecting you, and because no. people will say you have to do this, but you can't no. clock in. No, you don't. No, it's and, illegal. And if people do ask that of you, have them put it in writing mm-hmm. and send it to HR or corporate, or because just, it's not legal. Or so I'll tell you. 
call HR in general. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They Because then the person who told you you need to do that will get a stern talking to because it's illegal. Um, and you can take further action if they press it. But the, I see, because I have a lot of friends in, friends in retail management, Avi, because I worked in it for so long, who post things that are like, um, if you see someone... If you see something that needs to be done, just do it. Just chip in, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no. Here's the thing, bitch. We're the same age. We're both, we were both managers. You know, whatever. I don't ever feel that way. I never want you to... I will say, do you want to clock in early? Did you want to clock in early? You can if you want to. Text people, hey, if you want to come in early, you absolutely can. It, to me, though, it was never like a, I need you to come in early when you get here, clock in. No. Because there's there are people... I had... Courtney, my old manager, would come in early, probably 20 minutes early to every shift, and she would get a cup of coffee and go out and, like, smoke a cigarette, you know, or whatever sure. she did. And then she would come in and get ready to start her day. And that's fine. And I never... I, first of all, I open, so I'd be there at 4 in the morning. Yeah. I'm the first person there. I have to open with two other people. I would get and wait probably 10 minutes in my car, right? And then when other people showed up, we'd walk. But we got there, like, a minute before we needed to be there, because what's the point? But... Anyone who's telling you, like, you have to show up this early or work while you're not being paid for it, don't ever do it. And that doesn't make you a bad worker. That makes that means you know how to, one, take care of yourself. And one of the things that people don't realize is that the physical and mental health of your workers is a part of their job. Like, they have to ensure that they're happy and contented yes. and can eat and sleep and get to work safely. Yeah, but it's like trying to make them work through their breaks. Yeah. Absolutely trying not. to make them not take their uh, mm-hmm. PTO. Mm-hmm. Trying to, you know, like, because one of the other ones, I've been seeing this one woman and it's all, I mean, obviously they're all acted out skits and stuff, but there are things that actually happen. Like, yeah. you know, I'm on break and you talk to me, you as my manager talk to me throughout my entire break. That's not a break. No. That's work. Yeah. That should be, that's a work meeting. So as soon as you're done, then I'll start my break. Yep. You know, it's like you cannot... Uh, do any of that because then you're just breaking the law. Yeah. And if you press it, you, you know, you'll be in the wrong. Yeah. But this is the thing that people, older people are like, well, see these lazy kids, they don't want to work. No. They don't want to work free. Yeah. I think they old, don't want to give away their services. This older generation, the more traditional people too. I mean, are you mad that we are like, we're not, we're not doing anything and not getting paid for it. Are you mad that we figured that out? And you didn't? You know what I mean? Is that how we... I think all of it. I think it's the same reason people were mad when a whole bunch of student debt got uh, mm. relieved and there was I paid mine, you should pay yours. Yeah. yeah. I I had to pay all these thousands of dollars. Why are you getting off the hook? Yeah. And so you shouldn't. I don't understand that kind of thinking. No. I don't understand the, you have it better than me and that's not right. That's not fair. I, because as a parent... Mm. I know that as, you know, if you're a good parent, the whole idea is that your kids will have it better than you had it. Yeah. You want that for them. Well, is it only your kids you want that for? You don't want that for everyone yeah. to have it better than the generation before them? Right. Because the things that we struggled with or suffered through or however you want to put it, I would don't want younger people to have to do. I don't want people to go, well, this hasn't gotten any better. Right. This thing is still terrible. Whatever it is, I want young people to be able to go, oh, we have cracked this code. Yeah. And now we have figured out this system. Yeah. Because the other thing I see a lot is people who are, uh, who work on the internet, who make their money making TikToks or whatever, or YouTube videos or however they make. So, but they're making their money at home. Yeah. And they're doing it by making all their videos, they're making all their content, doing whatever it is they're doing, that people are mad about it. People are pressed about it because these people don't have real jobs. I know. And it's like, what's the definition of a real job? Yeah. If you are doing something that is paying your bills, yeah. that's, a, what more do you need? Exactly. I get it. Um, I, and are they mad because they're making <clears throat> more money than you ever made? Yeah, that you Doing ever... something that you don't think has really worked. Exactly. Is it because it's not hard enough? Yeah. They're not stressed? They're not coming home sweaty and gross crying and dirty? And what, which thing much? is it? I know. And that, well, and that's the other thing. Coming home crying and sad and depressed. Hating like, your life. Hating their job. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. which part is it well, that you're mad about? And it's weird to me because it feels like people get pissed off over the wrong 
things, right? Like, yeah, uh, you want your kids to have it better than you did, of course. And I think that should be the goal of most parents. And I don't think it is necessarily. But I also think there's a fine line. Better than you had it doesn't mean coddling or spoiling your children. It also doesn't mean them never learning responsibility. Do you know what I mean? Because how many kids do you know where their parents are like, I'm sorry, I had cousins where their rooms were cleaned for them. You know what I mean? Where everything was no. done to a T for them. Yeah, no. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And if you, if your kids... You've seen my children's room. I ain't touching it. Girl. It's I, a fucking pigsty. Gross. And I'm like, y'all have to take care of that yourself. I ain't That's touching disgusting. it. That's disgusting. Um, yeah, but it's... It's interesting to me that people, specifically Americans, want to see younger generations suffer. Like, that's a weird flex, because it builds character. You know what also builds character? Having people, like, support you and love you. And being able to travel and go to school and buy a house and have life experience without being in crushing fucking debt. So I don't understand what the... A big flex. Congratulations, you paid off your student debt. We live in a time where, like now it can be forgiven that should be something you strive for because we're the only developed nation that does not have socialized uh, education yeah the only one it's so sense. funny that you bring up the whole you know these parents who want to do everything for their children I will say here I'm as where I'm going to admit my fault one of many but you one that's on topic fault. I know is I have uh, my children are 13 and 15 and I have historically done way too much for them. I will, as soon as my daughter says, oh, I need help, mm-hmm. I will generally, it shouldn't need help. She doesn't. And help. now, I'm better now yeah. at saying, uh, here's my help. You can do it. You got mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Go, girl. Yeah. That's my help. You- uh, or saying, the instructions are on the side of the box. Or, you know, those. How that's how I'm helping now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But historically, I've done too much and made it so that they feel... Like, they cannot do things that I will... And I'll just do it for them. However, I heard the statistic the other day. (coughs) So there was a study done of Gen Z uh, entering the workforce. 20% of these Gen Zers had a parent go with them to a job interview. And I don't mean drove them there and sat in the car. I mean went into the interview with them. Yeah, no. And 7% of that, of that group, the parents answered some of the questions for the children. No. Now, by children, I mean these are grown folk. Yeah. That's They're like college age folk. At least 18. Yeah. Right. Going in for a job interview. First of all, as an employer, I wouldn't even allow... I'd be like, why is, there, why is your mommy here with you? Yeah. And if I interviewed you, I wouldn't Do you need your you. mommy here to do your job as well? Well, because... Because I mean, if so, should I just hire her? I want you to know that... The, Anything that happened, anything you said, if you scheduled them wrong, if you had to give them a corrective action, their mother would be on the phone calling you. Absolutely. And I would be all... Absolutely. absolutely. And it's like, you have beyond overstepped. Yeah. You have beyond helicopter parenting oh, your children. No. Because the other thing that I heard was that, and I knew this because I've heard this before, is that when these kids are in college, their parents will call up their professors and go, well, you know, Jimmy was in your class. And he failed this test, but he failed this test because he didn't get any sleep last night. So you need to give him that test again. And it's like, first of all, uh-uh. I don't give a shit why little Jimmy failed his test. Like, if you're uh, my kid and you called home and you're like, I failed my test in college, I'd be like, well, that sucks. What did you, what didn't you do? Did mm-hmm. you not study? Did you party all night? What happened? Yeah. Why didn't you pass? It is never going to be. Well, I'll call your teacher for you. No. I won't even do that in high school. That's embarrassing. Because when <clears throat> when Grace has had things in school where it's like, in one of her classes, she was getting an F. And I was like, why on earth? Are you? And it was an easy class. It was mm-hmm. jewelry. Oh. And I was like, why on earth are you getting an F? Well, she was getting an F because she wasn't doing her work. Mm, shocking. So when I had parent-teacher conference with that teacher, I said, so tell me, and I knew the answer. I said, tell me why she's getting an F in your class. But he didn't say it all angry, like, why is my perfect yeah. baby, you know, it's like, and he said, well, she doesn't participate. And I looked at my child and I said, why aren't you participating? Mm-hmm. I didn't go, well, you should be nice to her and you'd be kind to yeah. her. Because what, no, I looked at her and go, why aren't you participating? I don't know. Well, it's hard. Yeah, life's hard. Oh. Guess what? All your classes are not going to be, you know, 
easy. All of them are not going to be, Girl. you know, a course where you walk in, you sail through it. They're going to be work. <clears throat> yes. That's the whole idea. Now, most of her classes are fairly easy because she has special ed stuff. But she does have some gen ed classes where yeah. she has to put in some effort. Yeah. Like, they took her out of PE class because she refused to actually participate. And her PE classes aren't like ours were. Yeah. She gets to play, like, basketball with uh, other kids. Or they're doing some, like, fun things. Yeah. But it's like, oh, but it's work and I'll get sweaty and hot. I don't care. Yeah. Do, but so they were like, well, we're going to let her do this other thing because she won't, doesn't want to do this. Why? Yeah. Why? I th- She should do this. Or now, fail her. I mean, yeah. you know. You know, and so that whole idea that as a parent... Once your child is at a place where they should be able to do things independently, yeah. that you are stepping in and going, no, 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 I, I got this, I'll take care of you. You're doing them no favors. Yeah, girl, I know. I know. I mean, there's so many kids I look at nowadays, and I'm like, at 10 years old, I was so different. You know what I mean? At 15 years old, I was yeah. so different. Like, it's... It was also different. I mean, growing up in the 90s, first of all, but growing up in a small town, a small town is different than the city. You know what I mean? In so many different ways. Like, I walked to school from the... You know what I mean? I walked to school all the time. as Uphill, both ways. Yeah, in the snow barefoot. Um, It was so weird. I went to a really weird school. Um, (laughs) Right. (laughs) It shifted from time to time to be always at the top of a hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And so then sometimes I'll hear, like, Parker or Grace complain about something, and I'm like be so fucking for real. Like, you have no idea. Or, like, when they're like, can we skip showering tonight? Can tonight be the night we skip showering? And I remember, as a kid, being like, I need to shower. Like, I hate feeling gross, you know? It is just, like, such a difference. Because we had, we obviously have had such different upbringings that they have no idea that the world can be... Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and... Dark. You know, I hear a lot of Gen Xers, and I am I'm te- technically right at the tail end yeah. of boomers, but my upbringing is much closer to the Gen X folks okay. that I hear talk about. You know, we were outside all day, mm-hmm. and we drank from the hose, mm-hmm. and we were kind of feral. Kind of. Mine's not quite that, but as long Similar. as I was with my siblings, yeah. we were expected to be outside mm-hmm. doing something all day long. Yes. And coming in when the street, not streetlights, we were in Carlton, there were no streetlights. But as it started to get dark, mm-hmm. we were supposed to be in the house. We had to fend for ourselves yeah. a lot. We, I, By the time I was my children's age, I had been making myself uh, at least breakfast and probably lunch yes, girl. for a very long time. Yeah. You know, and what... I don't remember, and that doesn't mean it didn't happen. I don't remember beyond <clears throat> little, little, my mother telling me to shower. No. Or telling me to brush my teeth. No. Or telling me, no. you know, you now, you make sure you pack all the things in your bag for school. No. I was expected to know and do these yes. things. Now, my first dental visit at 10, when I had done a fairly poor job of taking care of my teeth. Sure. And had cavities, I was all, oh, Shit, I no, I, I now am paying the price for not. And the price wasn't that high. Yeah. Luckily for me, I had very good teeth. But I was like, oh, this is what the consequences of not taking yes. care of this. You know, it's like, or having people tell you that you stink is the consequence of not bathing Girl. or not wearing a deodorant. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. It's like the natural consequences, which I think a lot of people don't face anymore because someone's there and... Myself included with my children, because I do tell them every day to shower. I tell them every day to brush their teeth, but if I don't, they don't. I know. And it's like, I don't want to smell them. No. Because my children stink, because they're teenagers going through puberty. And it's, it's, girl, it's napalm. Like, they, I, they slept over on, whatever day, Saturday? And, uh, there's a rule before they come to my house, right? You have to shower. And put on deodorant. And put on deodorant. So I don't know what they do anymore in the showers, if they're even showering, because the fact that Parker came over here and I was like, what? Like, how? How did you... And he came over here later then, Grace, because he was showering. Yeah. yeah. How did you shower? He came to your house directly from the shower. No, but... The, and, and I'm like, how? 
you're clearly not washing any of your body because the fact that his body odor was so ripe, I was like, there's no way. There's no way you just got out of the shower. Are your clothes ridiculously filthy? Like, it doesn't make yeah, any sense what to is, me. What What's is, the problem? Yeah. And I, Gavin and I were talking about this because I was like, he, we have, I mean, I have to keep saying something to him because what happens when he gets out into the real world and people are like, I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to date you. I don't want to right. X, Y, and Z right. because you fucking smell. Well, his stinky male friends will not care. Are you all know? of his friends stinky? Are all of them? Probably. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ones who, like his friend Jacob, yeah. who has very similar, like, habits and whatever. I imagine probably. I don't get close enough to him. I don't want to. Um, But I recall this was many years ago. One of my clients who I had been cutting his hair since he was a little boy. I know you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. And so he's now in high school. Probably, I think he was a junior maybe. And he's sitting in my chair and I said, oh, you know, I said, you know, I've known you since you're a little boy, right? And he's like, yeah. And I said, So, I'm going to share some things with you that are not going to be real fun for you to hear. But I said, but I I really care about you. And I said, there's a couple things. One, I need you to shower before you come in here. I said, because you smell bad. Mm -hmm. You have pretty severe body odor. Yep. And your hair is so dirty that I don't even want to touch it. So, I have to shampoo it before I cut it. Now, I usually do. But with kids, often, I don't. And it was like, and I said to him, I go, if you ever want to date, no one's going to want to date you yes. smelling like this. No. And he was embarrassed, of course. Mm-hmm. But I said it all so no one else could yeah, hear yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, and I said it all with the, like, I really care. I yeah. don't want you to have this experience. Oof. Let me tell you what, the next time I saw him, he was clean and showered mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever. Smelled like a was, human. Yeah. Yeah, girl. But it shouldn't be on your hairdresser no to tell you that you stink no that is your parents job yeah and i think as a parent well so even with my son i would tell him it's like little boy you need to go put on some deodorant and he got very embarrassed Mm -hmm. and so i said fine i will say it so no one else can hear me i will do it when no one else is around whatever so that you won't be embarrassed of course and so i started just getting like right up on his ear And going, go put on deodorant. And he would still get mad about it. Yeah, I remember. And it's like, dude. Yeah. Nobody wants to smell that. No. Well, and here's the thing, too, is I think they're learning more and more, is that where your body smells is that's bacteria, babe. Like, that's not just, oh, you're... You're not just dirty. No, 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 no. It's bacteria. So we have to clean that or you'll be gross. You know, you can get sick, babe. Like, you don't want bacteria all over your fucking body. Oh, yeah. No. And same with, like, washing your hair. And so when I was talking to them yesterday, after we got back from the salon, because, mm-hmm. you know, you know, we I did haircuts on everybody yesterday. When it was just the three of us, I was like, okay, we need to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. I don't know what y'all are doing in the showers, but clearly not what you need to do. Yeah. Clearly, you're not washing the most important stuff. Mm. I mean, you need to wash everything, but there are some hot spots that need to have special attention. Yeah. Obviously. And you need to wash your hair. Yes. Not just, and I, so I asked my daughter, I said, are you washing your hair with just water? And she goes, well, sometimes I go, that's not washing. No. That's getting it wet. Mm-hmm. That will just, it'll still be dirty. It'll still be greasy. It'll still be whatever you need to wash. You're 15 years old. Your body chemistry is still figuring itself out and your hair is oily. Yeah. You need to shampoo your hair every single day with shampoo. And I shouldn't have to point that out. Yeah. And when you wash your body, you need to make special attention to your armpits, to your genitals, mm-hmm. like the stuff to your butt. Yes. The stuff that is going to get funky. Yeah. Take care of it. Yes. And they, of course, were squirming and they're not wanting to hear it and whatever. Yeah. It's like, I don't care. I get it. Yeah. I am. But if my mother had to tell me at 13 or 15 to wash my ass. Yeah. I would have been embarrassed too. I would have died of humiliation. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I was... I'm sorry, but you stink. Yeah. That would be humiliating to me. I... Because I had such a phobia. Smelling bad growing up. Yes. Because I grew up in a dirty fucking house with no washer and dryer, BJ and Joanna. And uh, skunks would spray because we lived in the country, right? But I had such a phobia of smelling bad that, like, the shampoo I used was scented. And I used body lotion, body spray, and, you know, whatever. Everything was scented. So I was all, nope, you sm- I smell delightful. 
But I was talking to Gavin about it, and I said, if my parent or grandma or anyone had to tell me at 13 or 15, we're going to have to relearn how to shower, I would die of humiliation. Yes. That same. How And, like, here's the thing. I remember them when they were little kids bathing. I remember being around when they were being taught about bathing and through their whole lives. This isn't new to them. No, there's They're just even a lazy. Chart. Yeah. There's a chart in the shower that says what you're supposed to do while you're in there. Oh. And it's like... Yeah. Because I get it. Sometimes Grace needs more prompts. Yeah. Sure. So you've got a thing in the shower mm-hmm. saying what you're supposed to do step by step. And yep. still you're not doing it? She, you're, yeah. It's that, liter- that to me is just lazy. Oh, yeah, yes. And that, I don't know, that is like the through line with Grace, right? Through everything. Yeah. The reason that she doesn't wash her hair or bathe properly is she's lazy. The reason that she won't, like, go upstairs to use the bathroom and wait until the downstairs bathroom is clear is like... Lazy. Where she'll stand at the door and do a little potty dance. Yeah. Instead of just going up the stairs. And your house has three, three bathrooms. bathrooms. Right. It, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's, I mean, they're all on different floors. Yeah. And that's, oh, that's some work there to get up or downstairs. It is. It's that little entitled privileged child in her, you know, that yeah. I'm like... Okay. I never, growing up, I never had more than one bathroom in our house. Never. Not until I was a senior in high school. I have to think. So after half of my siblings yeah. had moved out, then we had a house with two bathrooms. Uh, but yeah. up until that point, there were eight of us and one bathroom. And yeah. so That's I didn't have a choice. Now, luckily, the boys could go outside and pee on the lawn if they yeah. needed to. But it's still... Which I'm sure they did often. As I'm sure they did often. We lived in the country. Yeah. Who cares? And what's funny is we don't live in the country. And Parker has thinks it's a big privilege to go pee outside. I know. Well, and now like, he shouldn't do it because there's another house back here and we all can see <laughs> everything, Parker right. Maxwell. <laughs> so keep your bits where oh, they belong. Kids. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, stink. Your kids stink. Anyway. <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? I don't what? know, but we certainly covered the conversation that my children stink. Yeah. Um, oh, one more thing. Because I wrote a couple notes. How much time do we have? About 10 minutes. Oh, okay. One thing I wanted to mention was that um, Grace already being so bored in summer just started. Right. Grace already Day being... Day one. I know. I know. I'm bored. And always wants... And, like, wants to go do something. Always wants to go... And, like, I get it. Sure. Girl, I never did anything during the summers. I went to classes. You know? I yeah. went to college classes during the summer. That's what I fucking did. I, but I didn't do anything fun. I'd come stay with you, which was obviously yeah. fun. And we would do stuff. But, Grace, you don't always have to be doing shit, bitch. And... When we take her to do something, I took her and Parker to the park. <laughs> Where they did nothing. Yeah, great. They didn't want to play in the splash pad, and it was a million degrees, and they said, okay. And it was busy, but whatever, so was the playground. They wanted to go to the playground. Grace told me a million times, right there, it's right there. I can literally see it. So I park. It's pretty busy. We go, to, we go. I sit at a bench. Go play, kids. Go have a good time. I'll be here when you're ready to go walk the park. They stand there. And I said, why did we come here? And they're like, to play. Go really? play. And so they walk up the structure, the ramps, the stairs, get to the top. Parker go to, goes down the side and Grace is like, mm, I'm too big. I, I'm too scared. And I'm like, it's just a normal, just basic slide. Like, right. there's nothing crazy about it. No, it's not the slide of death, like, from my childhood. Yeah. But they just walked around. What were you going to say? No, I was going to say, because, you know, that's another thing that people talk about. Gen X, mostly. About playgrounds when I was when we mm. were children, the slide we're was dangerous. a metal. Yeah, it wasn't a tube, no. so you could easily fall off. Yep, and, if, and in the sunshine on a oh, I know it burn your flesh. Yeah. But also, once you got up to the top, once you started sliding, depending on the day, uh-huh. if it was extra slick, you went flying off the yeah. bottom. And if you wore shorts on that bitch, oh no, not you a good left idea. your DNA yeah. right there on that well, slide. Growing up in Carlton, most of the playgrounds, until like I was eighth grade, whatever, they started to change them out. Yeah. But they were all that old school metal on metal. Yeah. yeah hated the it. The merry go round of death. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we didn't do, they walked around to the playground for a minute. And then we were like, okay, let's go walk the park. So we walk through the marshland, you know, like the boardwalk yeah. area. And fun, whatever. Um, but Grace, every second was like, can we just sit and take a break? Can we just, can we just sit and take a break? And I was like, sure. So we would sit for like five minutes and be like, let's go. Like, I don't want to, I didn't come to the park to just sit here all day, you know? So. Right. But it's so funny. I'm like, girl, how are you bored already? What do you want to do? She just right. wants to go buy things. Grace always wants to go shopping. Well, can we go buy, can we go get? No. Every morning at breakfast. And I do mean every morning. Maybe we missed this morning because she was doing something else. Most mornings it is, 
can you buy this? Can you buy this? Can you buy this? And it's a list, depending on what she has either seen in the little coupon mags that they send out, or she saw somebody eat it on television, or it was in a YouTube video, or whatever. But it's like, can you buy persimmons? Can you buy avocados? Mm -hmm. Can you, can we make this? Yeah. Whereas it was like, every morning, like, well... How much money do you think we have? Yeah, and also you don't because want also to we want to go out to dinner or to lunch or to breakfast every day. day. Yeah. If she had her way, we would have three meals out a day mm-hmm. and then snacks. Probably. Well, and she probably wouldn't even eat most of her food. No, no. Well, <laughs> and and right. she what's and she'll come to my house and she'll see like us put groceries away or when she's gone grocery shopping with us. The next day she'll come over. And she, mind you, she, often she's just eaten lunch, you yeah. know, or she's had a snack. Can I have some trail mix? And I'm like, no. She's like, well, you bought some. You're right, but it's not for you right now, you know? <laughs> right. Or, can I have some, <gasps> can I have some white chocolate chips? No, because we bought them to make, like, uh, white chocolate macadamia cookies. And I was like, no. She's like, but they're right there. Uh-huh. I know that I have them, but you can't have them, Grace. She's like, Why? Because they're mine. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And my reasoning to her anymore is, like, because it's mine or because I don't want to, you know? Yeah. Because quit asking me why, bitch. Or I'll start saying, what do you mean? Why? What do you mean? Why? What do you mean? Like, right. So it's a never-ending. What is your What is your why? I don't understand your why. For real. You know? Ever. But, yeah. That's Christ. You know, I... And, you know, so... I guess it wasn't that long ago that... My husband pointed out to me, probably for the hundredth time, that I really needed to stop doing for them. Mm-hmm. And I now mostly have. I mostly, it's like in the mornings when they're like, what's for, for breakfast? I go, I don't know, whatever you're going to make. Yeah. Go look in the freezer. Or, well, I don't know what to have. Well, go look in the freezer. Yep. Go look in the, ca- in the cabinets. Yeah. Whatever. And I know that Grace hates that answer. Mm-hmm. But I'm all... You know how to make breakfast. Yes. You know how to make a lot of things at this point. You know, it's like, I mean, I'll help where I need to. Like this morning, she was going to put frozen hash browns in the microwave. Well, you're just going to end up with some nasty, soggy. And so I was like, well, those will cook in the air fryer. Okay. You know, and I will help you with that because I get the air fryer can be a little scary. Yeah. Because it's super hot when you open it up or whatever. Okay. But that's it. Yeah. You know, but I'm first going to have you read the instructions. And so I am trying now at this point in my children's life to be, to make them more independent because let's face it, they only have a few years left before they're adults. Yeah. You know, Parker's five years until he's done with high school. Yeah. So, which to me is terrifying. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You know. For several reasons. Yes, for so many reasons. But, yeah. I know, I, when Grace is over here, I have her do everything too. You know, I'm like, if you want it, you got to get it yourself, you know? Like, and it's the same thing. I help her when we're cooking or baking. She often wants to do it, but I'll be like, okay, like, scoop a cup of flour. And sometimes she'll be like, okay, that's, it's like, you know, heavy. I'm like, no, 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 we got to, like, level it out, whatever. But she does a lot of it, and she's very capable. Um, and both of them are. And so they just want to be catered to. Yes. I noticed the other day I was over there. It's when Mr. T was home. I don't remember what I was saying, but you and I were talking Grace was hovering, and Parker had come over with a jar of peanut butter and wanted you to stir it for him. And we were talking, so your husband said, you can do it. And he said, no, I can't. Mama always does it for me. And he, and your husband was like, go stir the goddamn peanut butter, like, in the kitchen. Like, they're clearly having a conversation. And so he went and did it and complained, well, I don't ever do it for her. Mama always does it for me. Like, bitching under his breath as he's stirring the peanut butter. I'm like, listen... If that was like Adam's peanut butter where the oil right, and the where peanut you butter need separate, to get a big spoon and yeah, really work at it. Yeah, that sure. would make sense. But Jif, <sighs> you know what I mean, or whatever it is, I don't think anyone really needs that much help. No. Well, and Grace will say things, she'll start doing a thing, and even before she started, she says, I need help. No, you don't. You absolutely do not need help. Yeah. You just, that's your immediate reflex. I, I need know. help. I know. You don't, girl. We got no. this. Yeah, I yeah. Re- and like I said, I realize the coddling is my fault. It is and your so fault. I am and now working jail. very hard to, to, to change that. Jail time I know. for you, ma'am. How so, dare you? you know, love your children. You know, I know. And, <laughs> I hate that. And back to the whole, you know, being a helicopter parent and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll be a cold day in hell before I'm, you know, 
taking them to a job interview. I might take them and sit in the car. You took me to my job interview. But did I go in with you? Oh, God, no. We would you have died? I would have left and been like, I don't want this job. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I don't know who that crazy bitch yeah. is who's following me in yeah. here. I don't know. Well, we sat in the... We saw her on the street. Yeah. She just started following me. We, we sat in the middle of Lloyd Center at the other end of Old Navy, and we talked about it. I got a new shirt, and we you coached me a little bit, and then I went to Old Navy and had my interview. And then I got the job. Mm. And the most important advice I believe that I ever gave you... Yes. ...was... If they ask if you can do something, you say, of course I can. Yeah, of course I can. Yes, of course. Even if you don't have a clue, yeah. then you learn how to can do it. Can you do acrobatics on a horse? Why, of course. Yeah. Grew uh, up doing it. Do you know how to ice skate? Yeah. Uh-huh. Every day. That's how I wake up. <laughs> right. I get up. I strap on the skates. Uh-huh. I go skate around the yard a few times. Yep. And then I get on with my day. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that and the uh, don't quit your job until you have another one. Yeah. Well, your job or your boyfriend. I know. That Don't has, quit one listen, until you have another one on track. You've been saying both those things to me since before I ever had a boyfriend. And <laughs> I have taken that very much to heart, in case you were wondering. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that note, time we to go. gotta get out of yeah. here, because I have stuff to do. Because I'm over your bullshit. Well, who isn't? I'm, oh, uh, I mean. Uh, I, mean uh, I mean. I know. I know. I know. I know. So listen, if you want to send us a message, please do. At, it would seem as though at gmail.com. We come out every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So like, share, subscribe. And if you subscribe, it'll automatically come to you. It and will. you know, if you have an Echo Dot, also known as Alexa, oh. you can just say, Alexa, play it would seem as though and our show comes right up so oh. we're kind of everywhere we're kind of everything i know we are everything we're every woman okay yeah it's been real it's been fun it's been but something. it hasn't been real fun ah, ah bye. Right, bye. bye it was not just done